أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His pure and beloved Messenger, the peak of His creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. and his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially the leader of our time, the awaited savior, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah. May Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala states in the Holy Qur'an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِّنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ سَلَامٌ هِيَ حَتَّى مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ صدق الله العلي العظيم Illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Indeed, the holiest night out of the entire year is the night of Qadr, the night of destiny, the night of power. On the night of Qadr, as Surah Al-Qadr tells us, two special events happen. One is that the Holy Qur'an was revealed on such a night. The actual Word of God was revealed on the night of Qadr. Allah's words are a reflection of the reality of existence. On such a night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed His words so we can comprehend them and understand them. And throughout a period of 23 years, the Prophet ﷺ delivered it to us. On such a night, we honor the Holy Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This night takes its blessings from the words of the Almighty God. The second special event that happens on Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, the night of destiny, is that the angels of the Almighty God descend on earth. In fact, no night out of the year witnesses so many angels descending on earth like this night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants permission to His greatest angels, to billions and trillions of angels to come to the earth because it's a blessed night, to bring the peace and barakah with them on such an evening. Imagine, as you see the world today, that the angels of God have descended upon us. That in itself gives you a sense of peace, tranquility and security. The world of angels is indeed a fascinating world. They are amongst the purest creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our discussion tonight, I would like to shed some light on the world of angels as described by Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam in the first sermon of Nahj al balagha And as you will do the a'mal tonight, the recommended acts of Laylatul Qadr, keep in mind all these angels who will live these moments with you. Let that humble your heart and empower you on such a night. Believing in the angels is one of the core aspects of our belief system. As the Holy Quran states in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second to last verse, verse 285, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ The messenger has believed in what has been revealed to him from Allah. 
وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ And all the believers, they believe in the following things. The first one, they believe in Allah, their Lord, their God. Secondly, وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ They believe in the angels. وَكُتُبِهِ The scriptures of God. وَرُسُلِهِ And the messengers of God. Therefore, believing in the angels is one of the core principles that we Muslims adopt. And it's well founded in the Holy Quran. Rejecting the angels, the Holy Quran considers that an act of deviation. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Allah says in Surah An-Nisa verse 136, If you do not believe in the angels, then that is an act of deviation. These angels are purified creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they play a very significant role in our lives. Therefore, it is befitting for us to better understand the world of angels and the greatest angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we start by examining the words of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam because when Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam describes something to you in Nahj al Balagha, you will not find a more fascinating description. And this is how Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam describes the angels of God. To begin with, my dear brothers and sisters, let's briefly examine what are the angels created from. The angels are created from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most scholars believe that they are still material beings. They're not immaterial. They're very light, created from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are bound by space and time. Yes, they have different dimensions. They can move between the heavens in a way that physical creatures cannot move. But in the end, they are created from light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humans from clay, the jinn from fire, and the angels from His light. So they are amongst the purest creations of Allah. The Holy Quran in one verse tells us that they also have wings. Their wings come in pairs. Now scholars believe that the presence of wings in the angels is actually a metaphor. It symbolizes their capacity to move. And the more wings they have, the more they have mobility in the universe to go from one heaven to the other heaven to go from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the planet to, who, who can come down to earth within a few seconds. For instance, one hadith says Jibra'il was one of the greatest angels of God, has 600 wings. Scholars don't think that he literally has 600 wings, but that's symbolic for his capacity to move. But the Quran does indicate that angels do have wings. Now let's look at the description of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, as he gives us a glimpse of the world of angels. The Imam salam, in Sermon 1 of Nahj al-Balagha, he says when God created this physical universe and the Imam gives you a fascinating description of how the universe was created, how the stars were formed, how the planets were formed. He says the first thing God created after the creation of space after the creation of the universe was angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala filled the layers of the universe with types and groups of angels. One hadith states that the most creation God has created is angels. Every square foot of the universe is occupied by an angel worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that. You know how vast this universe is? Today scientists are saying the observable, universe, the, the observable universe that we see is 90 billion light years across and it's expanding by the second. 90 billion light years, every square foot is occupied by an angel. Do you see the size of God's creation? Sometimes knowing this my dear brothers and sisters humbles the heart. 
Some people wonder, why is there so much evil in the universe, corruption? Most of the universe is overwhelmingly good. The entire universe is occupied by angels who worship the Almighty God, who are pure. Only in this little planet, which is a speck in the universe called Earth, there are some troublemakers here and there. Otherwise, the universe is overwhelmingly good. But Allah wanted to give the human being free will, through free will to achieve acts of goodness. And yes, with that comes some evil when human beings misuse their free will. Now think about this tonight, my dear brothers and sisters. When you imagine the kingdom of the Almighty God, the entire universe is occupied by angels, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the most thing He has ever created. Now look at the description of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says the angels that God created come in four categories, four types of angels. The Imam alayhi salam says in the first category, the Imam Ali Salam says there are angels. Some of them are perpetually in a state of sujood. Millions of years pass by, they're in a state of sujood prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all they do, worshiping God in the state of sujood. The second ones out of these worshiping angels, they are continuously in the state of ruku'. Ah. And the third ones, they are standing, safoon. One of the meanings of the word safoon is to stand on your feet without any movements. Have you seen soldiers, they stand before the king? Billions of angels are lined up in the universe standing before the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib uses this word safoon in khutbat al-muttaqeen. When he describes the believers, you know what the Imam says? Quran. When the night comes, the believers, they resemble the angels of God. They stand on their two feet, reciting the Holy Quran, contemplating the Holy Quran. They experience that sadness and sorrow. Because when they examine the state of the world, when they see how distracted they are with this materialistic life, they feel that sadness and sorrow. And they take the medicine of the Qur'an and they apply it to their disease, the disease of the heart. Look at the beautiful description of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. Indeed the Holy Qur'an has healing. Allah says we bring the shifa in the Holy Qur'an. Sometimes you may not realize it. I've heard some brothers, they say, yeah, but sometimes I'll read the Qur'an and I'm trying really to contemplate it. But I really don't feel immediately something happening. The Holy Qur'an, my dear brothers and sisters, as one scholar beautifully puts it, it's like a pill. When you have an ear infection and you go to the doctor and you tell your doctor, I'm not well, he inspects your ear and he tells you there's an infection in your ear. You have to take antibiotics. If you're taking amoxicillin, for example, every eight hours, you have to take a pill. Yes, it could get annoying, especially if you have to fast. And you have to time it. That's if you're not too sick to fast, of course. Otherwise, you should not fast. Now, imagine if you tell the doctor, excuse me, doctor, I told you my ear is hurting. Why are you giving me a pill that I'm eating that's going to my stomach? What will the doctor tell you? The doctor will tell you, Habibi, just to eat the pill, the pill will do its job, don't worry. Wherever there's an infection, it will fight it. Would it be wise for you to challenge your doctor and tell him, well, how come you're not giving me something to apply to my ear directly? Why am I eating, ingesting something? That's how it works. You eat the pill, you'll be fine. The Holy Quran is like a pill. You take it wherever there's a disease in your spiritual existence, Allah will cure it. That's the power of the Holy Qur'an. But sometimes you may, you may not be aware of that. So the Imam salam gives us this fascinating description of these angels lined up engaging in acts of worship. And if you notice that these three states the Imam talks about, 
there in perpetual sujood or ruku or standing, they represent the acts of salah that we do. When we stand in our salah, when we do the ruku, when we do the sujood, next time my dear brothers and sisters you pray, realize that you're synchronizing yourself with the entire universe. The entire universe is praying, not just you. Sometimes you may be somewhere where people are giving you that look, you may be at an airport, you may be somewhere and you want to pray and you feel awkward. Realize that the whole universe is praying, doing ruku', doing sujood and standing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Don't you see that everything in existence worships Allah, prostrates to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنُّجُومُ وَالْجِبَالُ وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابُ the sun and the moon and the stars and the plants, by their existence, they tell you, I have a creator, I am in need of a designer, and they prostrate to the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then when it comes to people, Allah doesn't say one nas and the people. What does Allah say? Wa kathirun min an nas. And a lot of people, because not everyone. Because you know, in reality, in this universe, the only being that refuses to prostrate to God is the human. Every other creature, every other being in existence worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a human being does not worship his Lord, he is the anomaly. Not those who worship God, they are the anomaly. They are the abnormal circumstances. No, the whole universe is worshiping God. The minute I stopped worshiping God, I desynchronized myself from the entire universe. Keep that in mind as you do your a'mal, my dear brothers and sisters. Then the Imam, after talking about these categories of angels, you know what the Imam beautifully states? The Imam says they have two qualities, these angels. One, they never get tired. They don't experience fatigue. Number two, they're never distracted. We human beings, you know what our trial is? We do get tired. We have a physical body. It's a limitation on us. But the power of the soul is stronger than the body. Depending on your mindset, you can overpower your body. Sometimes we feel lethargic, burdened when it comes to doing acts of goodness or worshiping Allah because our mind is somewhere else. Otherwise Allah has given this body the capacity to handle the fatigue. Sometimes when you're in love with something, you're obsessed with something, do you feel the fatigue on your body? When Steve Jobs and Wozniak, they were working on a chip in the 70s, this is before he created Apple company, he dropped out of college and he needed some money. So he went to a company, you remember Atari? They made those games. He actually went and worked for this company. They told him, we have a big chip. If you can reduce it in half, we'll give you $700. $700, imagine, it's not a million dollars, $700. Steve Jobs and Wozniak, they said in order to get the $700, they did not sleep four days and nights. Have you ever gone four days without sleeping? Have you? If we stay two, three hours later worshiping Allah, oh, it's too much. 17 rak'ahs a day, 17 minutes is too much. How did Steve manage to stay awake four days? Because he believed in what he was doing. He felt the passion. He loved it. He wanted those $700. See the power that God gives to the soul over the body? Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying don't sleep. You should get your rest. But you see the power. Or sometimes when you're in love, my dear brothers and sisters. Have you seen people in love? One brother told me that once he was messaging his loved one, when after three hours... From 12 a.m. till 3 a.m., he realized that his arm was so fatigued when he realized that he was actually aware of his existence. He says, I felt this pain in my arm. I was holding my phone for three hours. I did not even realize it. How come this person did not realize it? But in Salat al-Layl, if you raise your hand in Qunut, two minutes, oh, I get tired. <laughs> what does that tell you my dear brothers and sisters? 
Have we really known Allah? The angels see the beauty of Allah. They don't see fatigue. They don't experience fatigue. Because they see the beauty of Allah. If on such a night you open your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see the magnificent beauty of the Almighty God and the system of the Almighty God, you won't feel fatigue. With a loved one, you can go for three hours and not feel the fatigue because you enjoy it, you're into it, you interact with it. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the last thing on our mind. That's the first description Imam Ali alayhi salam gives. The second one, they're never distracted. They don't allow anything in the universe to distract them from their Lord, to distract them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today in our societies, my dear brothers and sisters, how many distractions do we have? How many distractions? Entertainment is a distraction that oftentimes distracts us not only from God, from our family, from our priorities. It's a distraction, especially for our youth. Excessive exposure to inappropriate music, that's a distraction. May is the month of graduation, right? That's a distraction for a lot of the youth especially senior high schoolers, because May is the month of proms. They are graduating and they're obsessed with this idea of proms. Some of our youth ask, they ask their parents, can I go to a prom or no? How many youth wonder about this? Come on, it's just only one night. Why should I miss out on all this fun? My dear youth, sometimes you don't really need to ask your parents or a scholar for something. Allah has put a built-in compass in you. You know right from wrong. You know what's a distraction and what's not. What's healthy for you and what's not healthy for you. When you deal with a situation like that, ask yourself, is this something really that will benefit me in my life? Something that will bring me closer to Allah and my family or no? Or it's just a distraction? Or it's just a waste of resources? Do you know how much the average family spends on proms in America and Canada? In the United States, the average family spends 1,200 US dollars on proms. On the fancy dresses, the limo, the, the limo cabs, the fancy dances that they have. 1,200 dollars. Imagine, there are people starving and I spend 1,200 dollars on something like that. What does it represent? In Canada, it's 850 dollars per family. Isn't this a waste of resources? Do I need a prophet to fall from the sky to tell me? I don't have a built-in compass to let me know that this is a waste, my dear brothers and sisters. And secondly, what kind of cultural message is being sent in these proms? Look at the negativity in the culture of it. It's teaching our girls in society that you have these Hollywood role models to look up to. Because at a prom, what do they do? You have to look the fanciest, bring your nicest dress, put the makeup and act as if you're on the red carpet in Hollywood. And if you're not, you're missing out and then it becomes a competition. Have you seen their social media? It's a competition. Who's getting more likes? Who's shocked others with their presence and with their appearance more than, than others? And it's not just May, it starts early in the year. You know the obsession with the prom starts months before the graduation. When the promposals begin to pour and you see some boys going out of their way doing the strangest things. Like one young guy, you know what he did? He got a cupcake and somehow he managed to inscribe on it prom and that's how he made his proposal. What kind of messages are we sending my dear brothers and sisters? Is this something that really brings me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is this a distraction? When you graduate, it's a moment of reflection. Oh Allah, you gave me access to education. You gave me these resources. Millions of people don't have what I have. Instead of thanking you, benefiting others, taking life as a priority for my future, I go and I waste my time with dancing and music and being obsessed with this life. You don't need to ask any parent. You don't need to ask any scholar. You be the judge, my dear brothers and sisters. Life is a distraction. But these angels, nothing distracts them from God because once you see the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once you see the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll never allow yourself to be distracted by anything materialistic or worldly. The day of graduation is a day that brings you closer to your Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. It's an important turning point in your life. 
take that as a wonderful opportunity. So we find that this is the first category of angels that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam describes. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Then we find that the Imam salam describes to us the second category of angels. The Imam salam says, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمَنَاءُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ وَحْيِهِ The second category of angels are those high-ranking angels who are entrusted by God to be the guardians, the entrustees of the wahi and revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The master of those angels is Jabra'il. Jabril, as the Quran refers to this angel, or Jabra'il, is the angel assigned by God to deliver the communications of God and the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity. He's not the only one. There are angels that work under Gabriel who deliver the message of the Almighty God, who deliver the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Jibra'il is the most high ranking of them. By the way, these angels that we have in the Quran, the Prophet ﷺ through the Quran wasn't the first to speak about these angels. Earlier prophets, the Abrahamic prophets and all prophets of God actually spoke about these angels. And that's why these names that you find in the Quran, they're actually Hebrew names. Jibra'il is a Hebrew name. It comes from two words, Jabra and Il. What's Il in Hebrew? Il in Hebrew means Allah, God, the one God. Jabra has two meanings, either the strong one or the servant or the slave. So Jabra'il is the strong servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the meaning. And all these high ranking angels, you will find that they have these names. Mika'il, it has a name. Israfil, Azra'il, these are all names. Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, another name that he had, which is mentioned in the Holy Quran is Israel. Israel means the servant and slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Jibra'il is possibly the most high ranking angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. He delivers the message to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saw Jibra'il in his actual form twice. In a beautiful description, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa states, when I saw Jibra'il, once it was at Sidrat al-Muntaha in his ascension mi'raj, he says, I saw him filling the entire atmosphere. That's how great Jibra'il is. And as I said, one hadith states, he has 600 wings, which allow him to move from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, receiving the, th the commands of God, and he brings it to his prophets. On such a night, Jibra'il descends on earth. Know the value of Laylatul Qad, my dear brothers and sisters. This great angel of God comes. Now historically, we find that in the city of Medina, when the Prophet ﷺ brought forth signs, there were some Jewish tribes over there who came to challenge the Prophet. They told him, are you really a messenger? He said, yes. They said, okay, we have questions to ask you. We want to test you. If you know the answer, then you're really the final prophet of God because the signs of the final prophet have been mentioned in our scriptures, in our Jewish scriptures. They asked the Prophet he answered them. Then Ibn Surya, who was one of the Jewish figures mentioned in this historical account, he asked the Prophet, he tells him, what is the source of your information? Who's giving you this information? Which angel? Tell us the name of the angel who is delivering to you this information. The Prophet ﷺ says, Jibra'il. He is the one who gave me this information. They told him, oh, see they came up with an excuse now. They said, no, no. If it was Mika'il, we would have accepted your message. But now that it's Jibra'il, we have a problem with Jibra'il. The Prophet said, excuse me, what do you mean you have a problem with Gabriel? Why do you have a problem with Gabriel? They're like, Gabriel historically is the one who brings punishments from God. Whereas Mikael is the angel that we love and we seek the intercession of Mikael and he's the protector of Israel. So sorry, we're not going to accept your message because we have a problem with Jibra'il.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلِ Say those who show enmity to Jibra'il and they have this negative stance and they say, we prefer other angels over Gabriel, we have a problem with Gabriel. فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Allah is the one who sent Jibra'il. What do you mean? You guys just admitted that he has the signs of the final messenger. And you admitted that Gabriel is one of the angels of God. So what do you mean that you don't like Jibra'il? They all work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Jibra'il confirms, confirms the previous scriptures, the Jewish scriptures, the Christian scriptures. But they showed that enmity in order to bring up an excuse not to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the Quran mentions this, they showed enmity to Jibra'il. But he is one of the highest ranking angels in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You also have other angels who carry out multiple tasks. Mikail. Mikail is the angel assigned by God to divide the sustenance of God amongst the people. Allah sends the sustenance for us, right? Allah is the one who decides what resources will really benefit me. How much of my money will give me quality life? That's decided by Allah based on your deeds and your intention. Mikail is the one who divides that on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have Israfil. Israfil is also one of the highest ranking angels. In fact, one hadith says, the highest ranking angel of God is Israfil. Have you heard about Allah al-Mahfuz? The preserved tablet in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has contained all the knowledge of the universe in? One hadith states, the eyes of Israfil, symbolically, not physical eyes, the eyes of Israfil are always on Allah al-Mahfuz. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala issues the command, He is the first who receives that command, then He dispatches it to the angels, and He gives it to the other angels. And He is the same angel who will blow into the trumpet when the hour comes and the day of judgment comes. And Israel, right? Many of you don't like the word Azrael. When you want to scare your kids, you mention Azrael. Azrael is one of the greatest angels of God. Yes, it's the angel of death. The angel of death, Malakul Maut. He acts on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he takes the souls of all people. In the hadith of Al Mi'raj, when the Prophet was going into the heavens, he passed by an angel who was looking at something in his hand. The Prophet asked Jibra'il, he told him, Habibi Jibra'il, who's this angel? What is he doing? Jibra'il said to him, this angel is Malak al -Maut. This is Azrael. What is he doing? He says he looks at the entire planet, all people on earth, in the palm of his hand, in something that's the size of a coin. Imagine what kind of device Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Malak al -Maut. He says he looks at it. When Allah gives him a command that this person on this part of the planet, his time's up, he goes and he takes his soul. This is Malak al -Maut. And he visits us every single day, five times. And you all know which times it is, right? The times of Salah, Malak al -Maut visits our homes. That's why when he comes to take the soul of a believer, you don't need to say anything. Malak al -Maut knows you. He will tell you, every time I came and I visited you, you were doing something good. You were in God's obedience. It will be a smooth transition when our soul departs our body. But imagine, imagine my dear brothers and sisters, if we meet Malak al -Maut and he's looking at us and he says, oh, every single day I visited you and what type of schedule did you have? What type of habits did you have? What did you do? Violating others' rights, distracted from God, lived a life just for entertainment. This is something that the angel of death monitors. So this is the second category of angels in the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Then in the third category, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam says, the third category of angels are those al-hafadatu li'ibadih, the protectors of his servants. There are two meanings to the word protectors. Because hafadha in Arabic either means to protect or to record. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Holy Quran. Kiraman katibin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He mentions the hafadha, He mentions that they actually write your deeds. Certain angels have been assigned to us to write everything that we do, my dear brothers and sisters. If it's a good deed, they immediately write it in our book of records. But if it's a sin, they don't immediately write it. The hadith says after seven hours they write it. You know why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, when my servant sins, give him seven hours, maybe he repents, maybe she repents. If they repented, don't write it for it. You see the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you disobey such a merciful Lord? These are the hafadha. Then the second meaning of hafadha are protectors. We have many narrations that state Allah protects us through angels from dangers, from deviations, even physical dangers in lives. How many times an imminent danger was supposed to strike me, my family, my friends, but through these angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us. That's why it's highly recommended my dear brothers and sisters when you go out, especially when you're driving and there's always the concern of getting into an accident, recite Ayatul Kursi, verse 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect, protect you. If you recite it once, Allah dispatches one angel to protect you. If you recite it twice, Allah dispatches two angels. Three times, three angels. When you recite it the fourth time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, move, I will protect my servant. So the third category of angels are those who actually Protect the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth category that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam talks about are the highest ranking angels who carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think of the throne of God as a physical object like a chair, no. The throne of God is the center of the universe and it represents the knowledge of God that He gives to His creation and also the command center of the universe where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala executes all commands. That is the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These highest angels, they carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, they manage the affairs of the universe. They are the most high ranking angels. The hadith says they have the greatest intellect as Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam describes them. They fully know tawheed. And do you know what do they recite practically every single moment of their existence? If you want to capture their essence and existence, the Imam Ali Salam says in two phrases, they say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. the highest angels of God who are the role models for all other angels. They know the depth of Tawheed and they know the depth of the Wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Know the value of Wilaya, my dear brothers and sisters. Even at the most blessed place of the universe, the throne of God, they perceive the greatness of the family of the Holy Prophet and their master Rasulullah it is these angels, my dear brothers and sisters, that especially on such a night, they pray for you. Allah mentions this in the Holy Quran, Surah Ghafir, verse number seven. Allah says there are angels who surround the throne and they carry the throne of Allah. You know what their task is after worshiping God? They do istighfar for those who believe and do good deeds. God assigned His most pure creations. Imagine the purest creations of God to ask God to forgive the human beings. Is there a rahmah greater than that, my dear brothers and sisters? Is there mercy greater than that tonight as you do your a'mal, my dear brothers and sisters? Envision the universe with billions and trillions of angels Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. 
See how Allah has honored the human being. Jibra'il comes on such a night and he greets all the believers who are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except a few. Inshallah, we're not amongst these few, my dear brothers and sisters. Well, the first one is Aq, Aqul Walidain. The one who is vicious with his parents, with her parents. The one who is not dutiful to their parents. They have not observed the rights of their parents. When their parents become old, they become negligent. On such a night, Jibra'il does not spiritually greet these people. On such a night, my dear brothers and sisters, if you know anyone who has tension with their parents, tonight is the night where we let go of these tensions. So we can be included in the blessings of Allah through Jibra'il. Secondly, the one who is qati' al-rahim, the one who severs ties with his family members who doesn't talk to his family members, who is on bad terms with family members. On such a night, Jibra'il does not greet them on Laylatul Qadr. Let's make sure that we have the best ties with our family members, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't leave tonight if there's any tension with any family member without making the firm determination to go and mend those ties and be included in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that His great angel, the archangel Gabriel will come and greet you on such a night, my dear brothers and sisters. This is a very holy night. Open your hearts tonight. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you all those around the world. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your parents, bless the life of your parents. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our Savior, Al Imam Al Mahdi Ajjalallahu ta'ala Farajah, with Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Tonight is the moment of dua. All these angels, Tanazzalul Malaika Tur Ruh, the angels who come down on such a night, you know where they go? And they take our book of deeds. They take it to the master of time, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraja. On such a night, open your heart to Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to hasten his reappearance. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless him and protect him. It's also highly recommended, my dear brothers and sisters, on Laylatul Qadr, to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to give you the tawfiq to go for hajj and also ziyara. Make this on the list of things you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And finally, it's highly recommended to also make this dua on Laylatul Qadr. وَجْعَلْنِي مِمَّنْ تَنْتَصِرُ بِهِ لِدِينِكَ وَلَا تَسْتَبْدِلْ بِغَيْرِ Oh Allah, use me for your work, for your cause. Oh Allah, don't replace me with someone else. Don't deny me this honor, Ya Allah. 